Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello everybody, I'm Cara Banks. Time to update you on the BMW Championship taking place here at Wilmington Country Club this week. It is the defending champion, albeit from a different golf course last year, that is back in the lead 12 months later. Patrick Cantlay's six under par round of 65 today has earned him a one-stroke advantage heading into the final round, highlighted, of course, by that eagle three at the par 514th. And after, he spoke to Kira K. Dixon. All right, six under today for Patrick Cantlay. Patrick, let's just get straight into the golf, especially that back nine. You go bogey, birdie, birdie, and hole out for eagle on 14. Just talk us through that stretch of golf. Yeah, it was nice to bounce back after that bogey on... Um on 11 and um, you know I hit a lot of good shots basically all day I hit the ball really well and uh, when you can get a wedge shot to go in obviously that's a bonus and uh, I'll take it. Uh, Xander is talking about how well you guys feed off of one another and kind of bring out the best in, in each other can you speak to what that experience is like playing with one of your greatest friends out here on the PGA Tour? Yeah obviously we have good vibes and uh, like playing with each other and we play a lot of golf together and so I think it's just a really comfortable pairing for both of us and not surprised to see us both playing well and when you're in a group where everyone's playing well and you know you have good energy I think it helps. Based on what you've seen in your game the past three days what's going to be the most important thing for you to keep in mind tomorrow? Yeah I think um, you know this golf course really requires you to hit small uh, solid smart shots. I think you have to drive the golf ball in the fairway and then if you can leave the golf ball below the hole you can be aggressive with your putts. And just one last thing, what is it about the BMW Championship that seems to see your name at the top of the leaderboard so consistently? I like bent grass golf courses, and, you know, this golf course is in very good shape, and so um, it's, just a, it's just a comfortable, comfortable feel uh, on these Northeast golf courses for me. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Great. Well, Patrick Cantlay came through a six-hole playoff against Bryson DeChambeau at Caves Valley to win the BMW Championship last year. He's got a packed leaderboard that follow him into the final round tomorrow, including the man he's played alongside the last three days, his good friend, Xander Schauffele, who just almost matched Patrick today, but finished with a 66 to sit in that tie for second with Scott Stallings. So let's hear what Xander said to the media after his round. Uh, it's just a comfortable pairing. We've played so much together uh, uh, with each other and against each other that, uh, you know, I, I can club off him. I know how he hits the ball. He knows how I hit the ball. So, if, you know, if I flush one or he flushes one, it sort of is extra information that we can use. Um, so, I mean, I like to use that as an advantage, and, and we're good friends. So it's a very sort of easygoing pairing, even though we're trying to beat each other. When you guys are playing practice rounds and, and you've got about 130 to the hole, does he ever walk up to the green? <laughs> Um, no, not in a practice round. It's not. I don't think there's enough on the line for him to walk up to the green. But um, I've seen him do it before yeah. when we've been playing together. It, it, I mean, it usually works. It, obviously, it's hard to knock on it just because he hold out after doing it. So um, he just gets a really good look at at the layout, and he's very field player. So it helps him imagine his shot. I guess you've got unique insight into this. How do you think he's a, a better player, Patrick, than this time last year? Um, I don't know. That's a really, I don't even know if you can answer that question. I think he's just competing at a high level. And so it's just impressive that he's doing it again at the right time. How do you, Xander, if you could put your fan hat on for a second, I guess, but, but how do you explain back-to-back -back weeks in which the, the best players on tour are playing? And in one week, you had a pretty nondescript leaderboard. And then another week, you get all the big boys, most of the big boys. Um, style of course. I think it's just a style of course uh, in general. Um, there's obviously a distance bias here uh, to hit it really far and, and, and putt well, but Memphis is sort of do or die, gun to the head if you're not in the fairway. You know, uh, A lot of guessing out of the rough, which makes it kind of tricky. There's a little bit of guessing out of here as well, and there's a ton of water everywhere, so it's a, you know, it, it's a hard course. Don't get me wrong, and, and great players win on that course, obviously, with, with Will winning. But, um, you know, I, like, you, like you said, with if you take all the top players, you know, I'd say that's like a characteristic for everyone in the top, you know, to hit it really far. You know, if you go down the top 20 in the world, you know, everyone for the most part hits it pretty far. So maybe that's what it is. I have no idea.
Well, Shoffley and Cantlay are likely to play together again for the fourth straight day tomorrow. It would be the final pairing, but Scott Stallings is also in that group, tied second with Xander Shoffley after a very good round himself. 66 after opening with a pair of 68s on Thursday and Friday. He is currently 46th in the FedEx Cup standing, so outside that top 30 bubble. But with his performance so far, projected to move all the way up to 16th and book his place at Eastlake. Let's get his reaction to some good work so far. Describe uh, how proud you were of how you played today and how you're going to continue that momentum going into the final round tomorrow. Yeah, excited. You know, today was a big hurdle, obviously, anytime you play with Rory uh, and just kind of everything that comes with it uh, to go out there and kind of handle myself from the first uh, tee to the 18th green and just, you know, kind of keep moving the ball, you know, down the field and, you know, continuing to, you know, be patient and understanding there's going to be spots where you're going to have to kind of pull the throttle back, but also, you know, especially some of the par fives, that was the goal today to, you know, be aggressive and, and assertive and put myself in places where I had opportunity to make birdies and I was happy with the way I did that and definitely look forward to tomorrow. Well, you might be wondering about the world number one, who was the FedEx Cup leader entering the playoffs last week, lost that position to Will Zalatoris, who will bring you an update on in a moment after he won the FedEx St. Jude Championship. Scotty missed the cut last week in Memphis, but he's definitely there or thereabouts this week so far. Tied fourth right now, 10 under for the championship. That is two off of the lead, projected maybe to move or stay actually in second place, likely um, should things stay the way they are. But a lot of golf still to be played with another 18 holes tomorrow. So let's hear from our world number one. Scotty, how would you assess the round today? Um, I played pretty solid. I felt like I hit a lot of good putts out there. They just they just weren't hitting the bottom of the cup. They were kind of going around it instead of going in. Um, but overall, I'm pleased with three under. It's still a solid round of golf. Of course, getting a little trickier out there now. Is that... Yeah, it's, it was really firm. Um, the back nine was definitely... The greens got really firm, and they were. You, when you're playing late in the day, there's a lot of spike marks. There's a lot of activity around the cups, and when they get that firm and fast, it's really, really difficult to score. What are you going to focus on tomorrow? Obviously, you're only, you're only a couple shots back. What's your main focus tomorrow to hopefully be able to raise the trophy in the end? Yeah, just getting a lot of opportunities, just putting the ball in play, and just trying to take advantage of them. Good. Hey, are, when they're yelling Scotty out there, are you thinking it's for you or for Adam? Or yeah, is I think it for we're both? both a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that's yeah. what he's used to too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I'm not, we, we haven't played together too often. This was, I think, only the second time. I think we played together at the Masters this year, but that was it. That's right. Do you remember which round that would have been? I felt like it was the first two, but I don't know okay. for sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, mate, I just, you probably didn't know, but early in his round, Zal had to WD today with yeah, bad heard back. Yeah, about that. So, number one's pretty secure as long as you can get yourself around tomorrow. Just be pretty good to Are try you to sure take that. about that? Well, top 15 can get you if they win, so one or two. Yeah. So, one or two yeah. is up for grabs, essentially, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have much to say on that. I'm just going to go out tomorrow and try to have a good round and hopefully win. So here is the situation with Will Zalatoris. He had to withdraw really after receiving some treatment on the fifth tee. Uh, his manager posted this statement. Alan Hobbs said, quote, Will tweaked his lower back during a shot on the third hole today after it getting worked on and the pain not subsiding. That was on the fifth tee. He felt that it was best to withdraw from the BMW Championship so he can work with his trainer the next few days to get the inflammation to calm down. Will looks forward to playing next week in Atlanta and the lowest that he can fall as the current FedEx Cup leader on the standings is to third place so he will still be in very good condition heading into Eastlake. There is our leader right now though Patrick Cantlay with a one-stroke advantage with 18 holes to play.